TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. A tense pause has taken hold since 7.15 this morning with the first installment of Israeli hostages, including 13 women and children, arriving in Israel after 49 days in Palestinian captivity. The IDF reaffirms its commitment to launch the second stage of the war against Hamas in Gaza following the culmination of the four-day pause. Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu warns Western leaders that unless Israel wins its war against the Iranian-led Axis, Europe will be next. Israel has abided by the U.S.-brokered arrangement via Qatari mediation by seizing its military advance in the terror-plagued Gaza Strip. Highlighting the details of the arrangement, Qatar's foreign ministry spokesman underscored that for the next four days, between 50 to 70 women and children who were abducted by Hamas during the October 7th massacre would be released in daily installments. We have just uh, finished with all the communication with all uh, parties in order to ascertain the lists of uh, those civilians who will be uh, freed as a result of the deal agreed upon by, uh, by both parties. The uh, lists have been handed to both sides and finally uh, in a communication just now the list has been handed to the uh, Israeli intelligence service, the, uh, the Mossad, in order to facilitate the implementation of, uh, of the deal. Uh, the beginning of the uh, pause will be 7 a.m. Friday, the 24th of November, and it will last, of course, as agreed, for four uh, days. And uh, the first uh, patch of civilians to, uh, to be released from Gaza will be around 4 p.m. of the same day. They will be 13 in number, all women and uh, children, and uh, those hostages who are from the same families will be uh, put together within the same patch. Obviously, every day will include a number of, uh, of civilians as agreed to total 50 within the four uh, days. The IDF concluded all preparations to receive the first installment of Israeli hostages. With all the successes we experienced along the way, today is the beginning of the light at the end of the tunnel. We have the great privilege to be here at this significant moment. We are all in this together. The IDF has effectively ceased far at 7 a.m. this morning. And while the Islamist Hamas and its terror affiliates in Gaza had breached the ceasefire, nearly 15 minutes into the agreed-upon pause, by launching a barrage of rockets towards civilian Israeli communities, all guns have gone silent since. Meanwhile, shortly after 4.30 p.m. earlier today, 13 women and children were released after a total of 49 days in Hamas captivity. It is important to know that while a tense pause will be upheld in the next several days, once the arrangement's duration runs its course, Israel will once again activate its strong power and force with the unyielding aim of achieving its war objectives. Control over northern Gaza is the first step of a long war. We are preparing for the next stages. We are looking forward in the coming days, we will focus on planning and fulfilling the next stages of the war. When the pause and fighting goes into effect, our forces will be stationed at the ceasefire line inside the Gaza Strip. I want to emphasize inside the Gaza Strip and they will also move along these lines that were agreed upon in the agreement. It is important to know that in contrast to the anti-Israel narratives broadcast globally, international support for Israel's war objectives remains steadfast and in the last 24 hours alone, the four ministers of the United Kingdom, Portugal and Slovenia visited Israel, during which they relayed to the Israeli leadership in Jerusalem their respective nations' steadfast support. Separately, the prime ministers of Belgium and Spain also visited Israel, during the course of which Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu seized the opportunity to highlight the core reason for the war at hand. We face a peculiar uh, kind of enemy, a particularly cruel, in human folk. Uh, they're genocidal. 
They're not fighting for this or that uh, territory. They're fighting to eliminate the Jewish state in whatever boundary they say so. Their charter says if you find a bush and the Jew is hiding behind it, kill the Jew, kill all the Jews. The goal goes beyond the destruction of Israel. They're part of an axis of terror. Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, Houthis. They say death to America. That's the great Satan. Israel is a small Satan. I hope I don't find any offense with any of you. You're a middle-sized Satan. They hate our free civilization. They want to bury it. They have uh, an ideology that is mad. In the 21st century, after the Enlightenment, after the scientific revolution, after the advance of human rights and democracy, this is sheer madness. Netanyahu went on to warn, in the presence of the Spanish and Belgian leaders, against drawing a moral equivalence between Israel and the Islamist societies. I don't give it relative uh, moralism that says, moral relativism that says, well, they have their society. They can do these horrible things to women. They can do these horrible things to human beings. That's their value system. That's not a value system. That's something that has to be fought. And one thing that we discover in the 21st century is that our assumption that we can live our civilized lives in our advanced countries, seeking peace, prosperity, and progress, and we can just sit back, and the barbarians will not come back. They come back. They come back in many places. And if we are unwilling to fight the barbarians, they will win. The Israeli premier continued by highlighting the obligation of democracies to fight against the forces that seek to eradicate all non-Islamist civilizations. So what is a democracy committed to the human, to the laws of war supposed to do? Do the laws of war give exemption to such criminals? And the answer is, they don't. They say, do your best to target the terrorists. Do your best to minimize civilian casualties. But if we, the democracies, accept, say that under no circumstances should we go in, because civilians tragically get killed, then we lost. We lost before we begin. You lost, and you lost. Spain lost. Belgium lost, because this will spread. You will see it very soon, because the axis of terror is not going to stop. If they can uh, emerge victorious here, they intend to bring down the Middle East. And next they'll go to Europe. After that, they'll go elsewhere. If you think I'm exaggerated, I am not. This is where the pivot of history now is going to be decided. While well, further highlighting Israel's extensive efforts to protect civilians in the Gaza Strip, far beyond its obligations under international law, Netanyahu stressed that the West must wake up and take a stand or else it will be too late. I'm happy to say that there is a decline in civilian casualties, which is our goal. Our goal is to have none. And primarily that's because of the ground action. The ground action has resulted in the fact that the warnings that we give are uh, addressed by the population, civilian population, they go south. When they go south, we give them humanitarian support. There are about 150 trucks now going in, probably go up to 200 and beyond. Food, medicine, water. I have not seen yet the effort that I'd like to see from the UN and the international agencies to build their shelters. Winter is coming and there's no reason not to build tens of thousands of tents in the safe zone, next to the safe zone, because they don't enter the safe zone, the UN, which I think is shocking. I said, okay, we'll give you a lot of little zones. And they're building little safe zones to get the population out of harm's way. Israel is doing everything in its power to get the population out of harm's way. Hamas is doing everything in its power to keep the population in harm's way. And that's the fact. And Israel cannot be held to a standard that no one is being held to. We have to fight the terror. We're in complete compliance with international law. I think in many ways we're setting a, a different standard.
we seek to minimize civilian casualties, and Hamas seeks to maximize them. And I would strongly urge you to make that distinction, not merely because it's right and just, but because your very societies are on the line. You're next. This is a battle for civilization. It has to be won. We will win it because we have no other choice. We don't have a future if we don't. Hamas has already said we'll do it again and again and again. So we'll have to, we'll have to eradicate them. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I'd like to encourage you, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Moreover, if you're blessed by our daily updates and would like to help us bear the costs of these productions, since TV7 Israel is 100% donation-based, please consider making a donation. You can do so by visiting our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. I'm Jonathan Essen, wishing you a Shabbat Shalom Mevorach, and God willing, We'll see you during our upcoming TV7 Israel updates. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.